that would be great. Um, go ahead and do that in the chat as well as note in your Okay. Uh, we're here. Okay, great, Sarah. Um, we need your student. Um, I want to pin her. Um, let's see, is she here? And is the San Diego State student here? Um, let me get that. So the San Diego State student is um, Kiara. Is Kiara here? Yeah, I'm right here. <laughs> okay, where are you? I want to pin you. Um, all right, let me get the participant. Um, okay, so good. Well, your voice sounds great. We can hear you. <laughs> and my student is Vivi Mendoza, I think. Okay. Um, she needs to speak up. Okay, Hi. yeah, let's hear you. Hi, can you hear me? What's the name of your, um, is your, what's your name as a participant? Actually, I'm gonna change the view to gallery for a second. I wonder if I just lost all that. Um, thanks, Joan, for introducing yourself like that. That's really helpful. Um, okay, where are, where is the student from San Diego State? There you are, Kira. Okay, let me see. Can you um, raise your hand? Where is she? Yeah, there I just did. So. <laughs> okay, great. I'm going to add a pin. Awesome. Now, um, and I need um, the student from Chico State to raise a hand. Uh, I can't see you. Where are you? Um, Sarah, Vivi, oh, Viviana, okay. All right, let's get Viviana. Um, and here I'm gonna do gallery view one more time. There you are, yay. Um, add a pin, awesome. Okay, I think we have all of our presenters, our panelists are here. Great, yay. Okay, um, all right, great. And so, all right, I'm gonna just, Mary Lou, can you raise your hand so I can find you? There you are, okay, thank you. All right, and Great, so thank you everybody for introducing yourself in the chat and for um, nominating a student for this panel. Um, we are so excited to have this panel together of students who are doing collaborative online international learning. It's really, an honor and a treat to have all of you here today. Yes, as Vanya, I think we all need to do our reaction with a big giant balloon and streamers and all of it because really we are, yay, we have made it through this pandemic and you guys have been doing this work together. So it's just bravo. And some of you did COIL before pandemic hit and some of you have done it during. And um, we're just thrilled to have you all here. So with that, I'm gonna have Mary Lou, the executive director of the COIL Center have do a few words. And then our Office of Global Affairs, Sally Lella Kremens is also gonna say a few words. So with that, let's get going. Excellent. So I just wanted to welcome everybody and to echo what Hope said, the work that we have been doing to connect people around the world during this 
difficult year uh, has been really heartening and we really appreciate the perspective of students. So particularly want to thank all of you for joining us today, for sharing with us what your experience has been and what it's meant for you for the past year and perhaps for your future as well. And also to thank all of the practitioners that we have in the room who have been doing COIL, who are interested in doing COIL. Um, thank you for joining us uh, and continuing to make this vibrant global community so important. Yay. And with that, Sally, would you like to kick us off? I would love to. I'm super excited about being here today. Hi, everybody. My name is Sally Crimmins Bellella. I'm, I am the Associate Vice Chancellor for Global Affairs and Senior International Officer for the SUNY System. And I have the enormous pleasure of working with the COIL team all you know throughout the year and and, and couldn't be just more excited about the leadership of our COIL team uh, led by Mary Lou Forward, our executive director, whom you just heard from, and Jan McCauley, our assistant director, and Hope, our community engagement specialist, Hope Wendell, thank you so much for all of the work that you've done. I feel like you guys have really been helping us stay connected and sane over the course of this last year, really. And so grateful to you, our COIL Center team for that. And grateful to all of you, our partners. Um, without you, none of that could have happened. So um, it feels good to, to be here with all of you today. And I can't wait to hear from the students. And I also wanna give a shout out to a member of our team in the Office of Global Affairs, Roland Toussaint, who's been working on some of the research with the COIL Center and um, really uh, is someone who feels very strongly that the student voices must be heard. And um, so I thank you, Roland, for that perspective. And thank you, COIL, for organizing today. I had hoped our, our provost in charge, Shadi Sandvik, was hoping to join us. And she may still. If she's on the line, she can raise her, or on the call, she can raise her hand. And we would love to hear from her. And otherwise, I'll just say that we're, we're grateful for her support of all things COIL. Um, she's just thrilled to have this COIL team doing the work of global learning for all, educating for a sustainable future. So thank you, everybody. Yay. And with that, um, we'd like everybody to have a chance to tell us what you are crazy and, and love best about COIL in the chat. And while we do that, I just want to remind you all that we also have this wonderful, and I'm going to put the link in the chat as well. We have this wonderful, um, great artifact for today, which you can also check out at your leisure. And I'm going to um, share my screen so you can see that for a second. But what's really lovely about this is that we have all of the students who were nominated for this. Can you see my screen? Are you seeing my Padlet wall? Yeah, I hope so. The student voices. Um, we are hope. Yes. Okay, great, thanks. Um, so we have all of the students who were nominated, the school that they were from. We had 24 nominations from six countries and 10 schools. We have a chance for students to introduce themselves. And students have already very industriously started to answer the questions in these columns about their experience. So this is a chance for all of us. If you want to share this with other collaborations going on on your campus, please do. This, we can open this up now that we've, we're having this event. And um, so with that, I think I'm going to go back to our um, wonderful group here and stop sharing that Padlet and move on to our task at hand and our, oop, let's see, oh shoot, I've lost the pin. Um, so we got to pin you all again. Um, so I'm going to pin Jose and Courtney. And um, let's see, we need to get all the other pin people, Hannah. And um, so people who need to be pinned, please raise your hand so that I, we can find you and add you. Um, Joan and 
Thank you. Keep hold, putting your hand up in the air so we can find you. Um, we have a couple more students to find. There you are, Valeria. And Alejandra, do we have you in the mix here? Is your hand up? Let's get you in here. There we are. And um, Priyanka, we've got to really give a big shout out to Priyanka who's here. It is um, late at night. It's actually later in the Philippines. It's 11, it's 12 o'clock for Hannah, who is one of our panelists tonight. And so we all need to give a little round of applause to Hannah. But Priyanka, it's nine o'clock her time in India. So boy, thank you for you all. And um, so we wanted to start off with finding out um, tell us what was the best thing about the collaboration? And um, why don't we start with Joan? Yeah, totally. Um, so I was a student in SUNY Ulster as a graphic designer. So uh, we worked along with uh, other graphic designers um, in Mexico City with the University of La Salle. Um, so this was pre pandemic time. So we had the blessing to actually go and visit um, our partners in La Salle and go to Mexico City. Um, we, uh, Professor Sean Nixon, which was my pr professor at the time, um, who is still in the graphic design program, um, worked with, with also uh, Hope and everybody involved, like really worked hard to get us a grant to actually go and visit um, Mexico. Um, and for me, that was like incredible because not only have I not visited Mexico, um, but like I, we went and we did so many, like, you know, we, was, we visited the, um, the university and we actually met with our partners, which was like super cool. I mean, right off the bat, they were so super friendly, you know, doing Zoom calls and everything, but actually meeting them, that was a whole other uh, story. Uh, but yeah, no, like, honestly, like um, we, like having that opportunity of not just working with them, but getting to actually know them and getting to know their culture and live in their culture for a certain amount of time. That was like the most amazing experience that uh, a community college like will ever, you know, like sometimes like people don't uh, think that community colleges have these great opportunities, but I'm like, no, they do. They think like big universities will have all these opportunities, but no, I, I was just so blessed that uh, SUNY Ulster Community College um, granted that uh, opportunity to me and my other um, uh, other uh, co-worker, well, um, <laughs> the students. That's great, Joan. And then maybe in the chat, you could just follow up um, the part about just working together virtually, because um, this panel is all about the working together virtually part. So we want to know, um, what was the best thing for you, Hannah? So from my experience, it's to it's totally different because mm. we were in it was this was during the pandemic already. So um, the best part for me was the fact that I got to meet people from different areas of the world, and it was just amazing for me because it's the first. Um, this is actually the first international program I've ever experienced, and it's just thrilling for me. And I didn't know what to expect at the beginning, but the fact that um, even after the project, we all still communicated with each other. And it's just amazing to build um, connections with, you, with these people and build friendships eventually. So yeah. Hmm. Great. Thanks, Hannah. Um, let's see. Valerie from Unibe in Dominican Republic. Hi. Hi. Um, I think I agree with Hannah a lot. Um, the best thing for me is that right now I, I'm still friends with uh, the girls that I work with. I also think not only the best thing, but impressive to me was that while we were working in, let's say, making a video that had nothing to do with our cultures, I could hear about <laughs> politics how they view things, how they do things in Spain, how they communicate with each other. 
And it was just, sometimes it was funny because they speak another language. So we will be working and they started speaking in the language and I will be like, hey guys, hey, can we go back to my language? Can we like get back? Valerie, I thought that you were, but you were both speaking Spanish. Well, yes, but they also speak Catalan, which oh. is a little bit different. And like, they will mix it up and I will be like, I kind of understand guys, <laughs> but let's go back. So we would all laugh and it just, it was just funny to like meet other people, not only to learn about, you know, uh, whatever we were working on at the time, but like to get to know someone else far, far away in another continent. Great, thank you. All right, so Priyanka, what was the best part for you? Uh, hi, audible, mom? Yeah, you're on. We can't see you, but you're. we hear you. For me, uh, it was a collaboration with SDSU, uh, and they were actually very great. Uh, we we got a, uh, the actual project on us was uh, on uh, cross cultural uh, uh, aspect for Coca Cola, and uh, they gave us various aspects where we didn't look into, and uh, we we could actually connect with them though we were like too far geographically, but still uh, we were knowing that uh, it was same. The people mindset was same. People were looking forward for uh, a great uh, collaboration uh, with us even, and uh, it was all about the uh, cross cultural thing, and uh, we got to know how um, the companies are working how the marketing is uh, all over the world and also we uh, were into advertising which was actually great and uh, it actually helped us in our own academics uh, as i'm in marketing domain it uh, helped me a lot and uh, all thanks to coil uh, because uh, i didn't expect this to happen during the pandemic uh, mm -hmm. but uh, and also to technology because uh, being far and still we could connect with people and understand and learning experience was nonetheless uh, thank you once again to coil thank you priyanka so you were collaborating with san diego state and um, so that's great to hear. And Kiara, you were actually in the same collaboration with Priyanka. Right, yeah, so we did um, evaluate the way Coca-Cola was advertising in India and the United States. And it was just kind of interesting to see how culture affected the way um, advertising worked, I guess. Uh, it was very different, like Coca-Cola didn't um, use the same techniques in both you know countries based on obviously the culture and the target audience so so it's cool to learn about like their point of view and like why they were doing it that way so i'm sorry you're muted i think <laughs> was that a new um revelation for you a new concept to think about that the um advertisement would be different in a in a different country than in the US, let's say? Uh, I mean, it kind of makes sense, but it was, yeah, I mean, to understand why, I guess, like the reasoning behind why it was so different. Mm -hmm. So, okay, so that was the best part for you was um, sort of seeing those differences? Yeah, just understanding okay. like the, yeah. Mm -hmm. Viviana, what was the best part for you? It was, there was a lot of good parts for me, but I would say the best part was just being able to exchange cultures. Um, I've never really... Um, and you are from where? Oh yeah, I'm sorry, I'm from Chico State, California, uh, CSU Chico. Okay, um, and you collaborated with? With URV. Okay, URV, oh, in Spain? Yes. Okay. Yeah, so I was uh, collaborating with that university and at the end of it, at the end of our conversations, we would kind of um, practice speaking in the languages that we wanted to improve on. So um, I wanted to improve on my Spanish and they obviously wanted to improve on their English. So then at the end of, of doing the assignment we had to do, we would practice. So they would speak to me in English and I would speak to them in Spanish. And um, I don't know, I just thought it was a really beautiful thing to be able to help each other learn a new language and, and practice in, in real time. Great, thank you. Alejandra. 
Hi, nice to meet you. Uh, my name is Alejandra. I'm from the Universidad Católica Andrés Bello in Caracas, Venezuela. And for the collaboration with COIL, um, we interact with students from SUNY, uh, the State University of New York. Um, we use, yes, we use uh, Zoom, Google Meets, and WhatsApp groups to start a cross-cultural groups to a conversation about symbols of freedom between both countries and favorite dishes uh, typical of each country. Uh, it was interesting to, to exchange our perspectives on both countries. And um, we create a connection of friendship with our, our friends of Sony in the city of Al Albany. And for me, the best thing uh, about a collaboration of this style in, in times of pandemic is that it not only gave us the opportunity to live with people on the other side of the world, but it also gave us the opportunity to get to know through new skills, um, aspe aspects of people that we would never have met without facing this new challenge with COIL. So thank you very much. Mm, thank you too, Alejandra. And I would imagine that the students in Albany got so much working with you in Venezuela, especially at this time. We all are with you in solidarity of what you are going through. Um, yeah. Thank you. Um, <laughs> Thanks to you. So Jesus, we have not heard from you. Hi. Hi. What what school are you located at? We collaborate with the Sony in the with the Rockland Community College. Okay. And your school is Universidad it's Universidad Veracruzana. Veracruzana. In, in Jalapa, Mexico. It, the experience was I like it. Mm -hmm. because uh, our partners and the professors uh, was, oh, I'm sorry, my English is not. Do it in Spanish, that's totally fine. Can I speak in Spanish? Yeah, and we'll translate. Mm -hmm. eh, bueno, en términos generales, nuestra experiencia, bueno, mi experiencia como estudiante fue bastante buena. Me gustó trabajar mucho con los compañeros porque aprendimos nuevas cosas y este, Eh, aprendimos sobre las culturas, sobre cada uno de ellos. Este, sí tuvimos este un, un poco de dificultades para, sobre todo en el idioma. Este, para comunicarnos creamos grupos de WhatsApp, de Facebook. Nuestras profesoras crearon un grupo de Facebook en el cual podíamos interactuar todos. Y pues fue de mi agrado tomar un curso COI. That's all. Um, can anybody uh, translate a little bit of what Jesus just said? Yes, I can, Hope. Thanks, Valerie. Um, he was just saying that he very much liked the opportunity, that he had a little bit of trouble with the language, obviously, uh, but that didn't stop him. He, um, they had different groups to communicate, Facebook, WhatsApp, and that uh, at the end of it all, it was just a good experience for him, for him, in spite of um, the difficulties of the pandemic. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that. Courtney, last but not least, how was the experience I, I, for you? What was the best part? Uh, I think um, the one of the best parts of the experience was not, first of all, how we were different, but first of all, how we were the same. Uh, we worked, Valencia College worked with um, Unison, the University of Sonora in Mexico. And um, we had, first of all, there was a great bond like, hey, you're a science too, hey science, what's up? So we worked with some astrophysicists over there and we were the computer science team building, um, building efficient tools for them to search NASA's websites, so they can get the data that they need quickly. So uh, there was that first, first of all, there was that great bond, like, hey, you're doing something really cool. I, 
I love what you're doing. And so we had great conversations about that. And so first and foremost, it was that whole, ah, it's a small world because there's something about us that's so much the same. There were a few things that were, you know, slightly different. There, there were times when there are other, other things that we knew ahead of time, like uh, be considerate that there's going to be language barriers and, and be considerate of that and, and how uh, you're not going in and saying, this is the one language that we're going to use. And these are things that we know in our heads ahead of time. And, but when we get into that situation, we're kind of pushed into it. There was once when um, I was speaking in English and the professor stopped me or didn't stop me, but kind of nudged me. So you, you, can, you can do this one in Spanish because they're, they're not, they're not help. It's yeah. And the, the um, students who were in Mexico were um, struggling with per how fast I was speaking in English, but changing over to Spanish slowed me down a whole lot because <laughs> it's not a first language at all. Um, and it was great to have that blend of, um, you know, they're trying in English and we're trying in Spanish and, and um, but we're all talking about something that we all think is beautiful. So I think that was part of the, the greatest experience for me. And I'm also very jealous of all the people who did this not during COVID who got to go visit. I would love to meet my counterparts. They seem to be fascinating people. Very smart, miss them. Well, maybe something can shift so that that can happen. Maybe. All right. So now's the part of the program that we want to know what the challenges are. And while you tell us the challenges, I want folks um, who are here as part of the audience to think up questions you have. Um, we are also going to ask um, our panelists what how they apply coil currently and what they're surprised by but right now we're going to ask challenges so if you have questions start thinking about what they are and put them in the chat soon but not yet so panelists can you tell us um because time is moving by tell us um i'm going to mush two questions together what your challenges were and what you were surprised by okay so um, I'm going to go back to Joan to start us off and go around. Um, well, uh, we didn't have any uh, um, language barriers or any issues. Um, maybe because we did uh, um, in the mornings, we did like communicated with them via Zoom, all the class, uh, all the graphic design classes. Um, so I don't think that was an issue at all. Maybe, you know, maybe they were like 30 minutes late or something, but honestly, like there were no major issues. Were you doing um, like also back channels with WhatsApp or Facebook messenger or something? Yes. Yes. Snapchat definitely or Facebook. Something. Yeah, definitely Facebook. Um, we okay. did add each other, um, uh, especially like the partner who I was working with. Um, so I was like, you know, whenever we had time, we could communicate uh, through via messenger. But other than that, no, it was it was a very smooth ride. What was surprising? Was there anything surprising for you? Oh, my gosh. Uh, they were so talented. They were oh. so talented. I was like, these people were doing uh, motion design and 3D design. And I was just like, wow, like I am super inspired by them. And I want I just wanted to work even harder. <laughs> so, mm. so yeah, I was very surprised by, by their, by their art. Mm. Yeah. And you put in the chat, you're still in touch with um, these designers. Yeah. Great. Yeah. And they're traveling all over the world. They even working with Google. I'm, I mean, like they are really, really professional and talented people and the friendliest people I have ever met. And now they're your colleague. That's pretty cool. Yeah. yeah. Thanks, Joan. Hannah. So tell us about a challenge or what you were surprised by. So for my experience, it was mostly about the time difference because I was working with mm -hmm. students from University of Hawaii and a few students from um, Kansai University as well. So we had to set meetings every week and we had to make sure that we would schedule them at a time that it was um, convenient for all of us, that it wasn't too late in the evening or too early in the morning. So that was one challenge. Hold on, that so was that team to team or the whole class to whole class? Probably the whole class because oh, okay. we all were were required to um, meet with, it, with each other for a week, so yeah. Got it. But 
So for the thing that surprised me the most was how easy it was to work with them. Because, you know, when you meet new people, it's usually there's this awkward um, first encounter with each other. But for some reason, we, we didn't have that. Everybody was just so open. Everybody was so easy to work with. So that's something that's just surprising for me. Because here in the Philippines, a lot of us are just um, shy type kind of people. So, yeah, that's one thing. Yeah. And it was so easy to communicate with them using um, like a lot of platforms. We used Zoom for our meetings and we had WhatsApp and we also communicated with, with the whole class using um, Immerse You. So, yeah. So were you mostly in, in language or I mean in English or were you, um, it, was anybody speaking Japanese or um, any other language? No, everybody um, was fluent in English, so there were no language barriers for that um, core Got experience. It. Okay, thank you. So actually, panelists, if you see a question in the chat that looks interesting to you, go ahead and answer it. I'm going to go keep going around. Um, um, let's see, who's next? Let's see, was it Valerie? Were you next? Yeah, I think so. Okay. Um, I think the biggest challenge was also uh, the time difference because in Spain, I think it's like five, six hours ahead. And sometimes I was working with a, mostly with a small group, four girls um, apart from me. And sometimes it's like, well, here it's 12 p.m., but there is a lot like in the afternoon and I have classes, I cannot do it now. Sometimes we would um, only be three of us in the calls then it will be two, then um, it was, at first it was kind of hard just to like get all of us together to work in a project. Uh, the hardest one was a video that we have to do. And we were like, well, I don't know how to work with this program, but uh, Zoom doesn't work. And it was, you know, that's this back and forth of how are we gonna get this done? And I think the most surprising thing was um, like Hannah, how well we got along because I was the only one from Dominican Republic. All of them knew each other and they had the same classes. They were friends. So I was a little bit intimidated because I was like, maybe, I don't know, it's going to be weird or they're going to be like, bundle up just talking to each other and they're going to let me out. But at the end of the day, it was fun. It was just um, a really cool experience. And I would like to answer a question. Um, Yongwen Lee, I'm sorry if I don't know how to pronounce it, but... Um, it says, do any of you feel cultural shock when interacting with students from other countries? And yes, definitely. Because even I spoke the same language as them. I thought I had a lot more in common with Spain. No, I don't. Because <laughs> it's another continent. It's very different. I think the best, what I do is just I ask a bunch of questions, always taking in mind not to be offensive or anything. But I always like to ask, um, how do you do this? Is this offensive? How do I speak with people from your culture? How do I do this? Um, like, excuse me if I don't know, excuse my ignorance, but I'm trying to learn. That's just what I do to like, um, to like, um, I don't know, kill those barriers. Wow, good for you. Go Valerie. Um, we'll have to hear from other students how you handle that too. Yeah, experience culture shock, truly. So, Privanka. Uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, to say, I didn't have actually many challenges uh, because we were able to understand what SDSU students were communicating. And uh, it was likewise the same for them also. I hope they were able to understand. And uh, the collaboration was uh, well, very uh, smooth among us. Uh, there were so much of uh, learning experiences we shared. And uh, of course, we had uh, great uh, uh, learnings from the collaboration that we made. Uh, but uh, talking about challenges specifically, I must say the time was the uh, challenge we faced because it was like nine hours or like nine, ten hours ahead, uh, like time that difference we had faced. 
but uh, nonetheless as we were uh, so eager to learn and we, we were uh, very open to collaboration we wanted to learn how the experience would be and also the concept actually was very interesting i must say learning about the uh, as i said it was actually cultural differences in uh, uh, coca cola so we were actually interested to know how advertising is different in uh, both the countries what what was the reason behind the differences or uh, as we made a study and which was also helpful for our academics we didn't face it as a challenge we faced it as a, we just took it as a learning for us and uh, it was a uh, very smooth i must say i i didn't feel any challenge among us and the sdsu students what did you was there a surprise any surprises surprise uh, i i didn't expect this to happen in the pandemic this is a most surprising thing i must say uh but uh nothing much surprise but still uh, we learned the uh aspect the differences which uh, they were feeling how they were looking at things and how we were looking into uh, the aspects of uh collaboration or like beat our learning that was different uh yet it was uh, very new and uh it i must say it was not very uh so like difficult for us to understand and collaborate it was actually smooth between us thanks for that great uh viviana do you want to go next yeah i feel like i had a very similar experience to valerie's um i the students i was working with they were all in the same class and they all knew each other they were all studying the same thing so i i was a little bit intimidated as well and i thought that i was going to be left out um, because i wasn't originally part of that group but it wasn't like that at all um it was a I, it was a really good experience and I felt very invited, very welcomed. Um, and also something that was very challenging was the time difference. There is a nine hour time difference between California and Spain. So it was it was really hard to schedule time to meet sometimes, um, but we did it. We got through it. And I would also say. Um, Can because, I just ask one thing? Were you meeting in your little team or were you meeting in the larger class? Yeah, it was just our team. Okay. So there was a total five of us. Huh. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then you were going to say? Oh, I was just going to say, um, so my parents are from Mexico, so I'm a native Spanish, speech, Spanish speaker. And because they knew that, I feel like they kind of use that as a security blanket sometimes. And they, they didn't want to speak English in the beginning because they were a little bit embarrassed. Um, but I was like, no, it's okay. Like, we're here to learn. Um, you can speak English. And they're like, no, it's because I'm going to say something wrong. So they would just, in the beginning, they kind of spoke Spanish a little bit until they were a little bit more comfortable with speaking English. Um, but it was it was still a really great experience. OK, great. Thank you so much. Alejandra, challenges and surprises. Okay, well, um, in my country, Venezuela, communications are affected by poor connections, and it's horrible. <laughs> and this was uh, uh, one of the major uh, dif difficulties uh, we had to deal with um, when talking to our friends in Albany. Um, out of language, was also was also a challenge sometimes due to their basic knowledge uh, of Spanish and the lack of knowledge of English in our groups. And but for me, it's always helpful to know the point of view of a different culture. And I'm definitely uh, more organized and competent to understand and um, what life is like in another country and how we adapt to the environment depending on where we are. Um, for me, uh, was surprising uh, the fact that COIL means getting out of your comfort zone and facing life from the challenge of the everyday, uh, breaking cultures and belief systems by having to share with someone else. And, I would recommend this experience to all those people who want to have a view uh, beyond their their door, uh, locality or border to give themselves the, the opportunity uh, to work in a group and to agree and contribute, con contribute 
with their skills because they will find very dedicated people along the way. Woo. Oh, Alejandra, <laughs> great, thank you. Um, Jesus, do you wanna tell us about a challenge or a surprise? And you can speak in Spanish, totally fine. We have Valerie here who will help us. <laughs> I'm going to try it in English this time. Um, the main challenge was the language because at the university we don't take many, many English courses, uh, only two. In our previous school training either, we use translators at the Rockland College. We're very open and patient. Um, I was surprised to learn about their, their cultures and how similar we are in some ways as young people. Wow, great. Thank you. That's well, interesting to hear. Um, yeah, well said, indeed. Um, okay, let's hear from Chiara. Okay, so I think the only challenges really were um, we were using Slack to discuss um, Coca-Cola's social media presence. And I think it was only just uh, just responding to each other on time due to the time difference. And then it was also a holiday in India. Um, and then what I found surprising was um, they were very proficient in English and were really good at writing. Um, and yeah, we're very well knowledge about social media, so. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Okay. Um, and Courtney, challenges and surprises. Um, the challenges were easily remedied we, uh, with WhatsApp because our, our challenges were a minor time difference, which was two hours and after our time changed in three hours, um, but just making sure that everyone had time to meet after work, but their after work was, you know, 10 o'clock for us. Um, it was, people were getting ready for bed over here, but we used WhatsApp a lot for that, uh, for that and the, the language barrier too, because um, out of the six people then um, five of us had no problem reading in the other language, even if we were not as speaking in it. Um, and it went both ways. Um, so a lot of times when we felt like our communication was lacking um, when we were speaking to each other, then we could say, okay, can, can we go to, to written communication just to be a little bit more comfortable? And everybody seemed to be okay with that. So that, that was not so much a surprise, but uh, you know, a challenge, but one that was easily remedied. Uh, I think the only thing that was um, a surprise is that we forgot about Holy Week in Mexico. And, you know, we have just, you know, maybe people take Good Friday off, maybe not. And they have uh, all, of, all of Holy Week there. And um, we're saying, hey, you know, are you guys there? And um, they, they, they weren't. And we realized, oh, <laughs> it's because it's, it's a holiday. So I guess that was really the only surprise, but they worked out pretty well. Interesting, yeah. Different places have different holidays. Um, that really does sort of shift things, right? Um, Anna Paula, you have your hand up. Yes, thank you. Well, I'm not a panelist, but I want to share my, my challenge, my experience. So if I can. Sure. Yeah, well, I am, hello everyone. I'm from Mexico. I'm studying in Universidad Veracruzana. And I work with um, Team University of India. And it was a very excited, but difficult to me. At first for the language, uh, neither of us, uh, neither them or, or nor me, um, English is our first language. So um, it was a little difficult. And in a point of the, the this meeting or the interview, uh, I told in I talk in in Spanish and then talk in their language. So it was a little uh, difficult and crazy. Mm -hmm. And the second challenge is the times because uh, we had a difference of eleven uh, hours. So when we are waking uh, up, they're going to sleep. 
so it was a little difficult. And the third uh, thing that I want to mention that we have a, a little different creative, creative difference. So it was crazy because we, we maybe we used to, to have this difference with our um, classmate or with, with, with people that we know. But when it's with people that you don't have idea what they thinking and only you are um, beginning to meet them, it's a little difficult. But finally, we solve these these three uh, problems, and we make a, a a great job. And nowadays, we have in Doge, we are in social media, so it was great. But yes, it was difficult. So, which social media did you use? Uh, yes, uh, well, for the the collaboration, we use WhatsApp and mm -hmm. we have a meeting in zoom but now uh, we follow us in instagram and in facebook and yeah okay great so um a question to all the panelists so how do you apply what you have learned from coil to what you do now i know joan you have graduated from college and you are in the work world and so do you see that there are some things that you learned from the COIL experience that you use in what you do um, in your life now? Um, well, maybe this is not the specific answer to it, but uh, because I was so amazed of uh, Mexican uh, design, I was like, I wanna go work there. So like I I literally like did not know any graphic design firm in Mexico or anything and because I did have the opportunity to go there and to learn more about it I I was just like I can move there anytime so like for me if it wasn't for for coil I would have never you know I I because I was just so focused oh let's apply to something in the United States where I'm at uh but yeah for sure it like opened my eyes and it opened like my horizons like hey this is not as bad as I thought or as, as scary as I thought but yeah no I can totally like, go there and work um but other than that like you know communication is key you always have to uh, you know wherever you go you're gonna work with a team um so, and with different kinds of people with different kinds of uh, walks in life. So I feel like uh, COIL does prepare you to you, uh, to communicate with those people um, and respect all their cultures um, in a very professional environment. All right, thank you. Hannah, it's your turn. What have you, what have you taken from your experience moving forward? So I, I would have to agree with Anjone because um, COIL actually exposed me to a lot of different cultures and it is very true that for me as a future medical professional, we are expected to um, have great communication skills and to work with other people and I think um, it's really true that COIL prepares you for that and apart from that, um, the COIL program that I participated in focus on business. So a lot of people actually ask me, like, I'm a medical student. So why am I taking up um, a business centered course? Because it's kind of far. That's what they think. But the thing is, um, COIL, the COIL under um, the entrepreneurial mindset was basically it talks, it tells you that there's another method, there's another way for us to alleviate or mitigate environmental problems. And in our subject, in our um, for community, community and public health, we're always taught that the environment can um, affect the health of communities, of human beings. So, but for this COIL project, it teaches you that businesses in today's time can also use um, that in order to mitigate and help build a healthier and a more sustainable community. And I just love that idea. That is why I volunteered to join in this project. Go oh, Hannah, wow, <laughs> that's great, that's wonderful. Um, great to hear that whole thinking. So folks, um, please put uh, your, if you um, 
are starting to think about your answer, go ahead and start typing in the chat. And uh, Louise Vega, put your question in the chat. We only have about 10 minutes left. So um, for the panelists, can you go over a little bit? Um, we're going to hopefully keep this recording going at least maybe 15 minutes after the hour, if you can, to just finish up. But um, if people can start answering this question in the chat, that would be great. So I'm going to move on to, I think Valerie is our next person. So how has um, this experience, what have you used from this experience moving forward? I think um, my career is called communication. And it is exactly that what I take, how to communicate from people that are really different from you. Because if you think about it, let's say Latin people with Asian people, completely different. It's very easy to misunderstand each other. It's very easy to commit an offense and you have no idea. So I think it's the way that you attack problems and you attack situations uh, from a point of respect, from a point of understanding, um, from a point of, I may not know how to communicate with you, but I'm gonna ask. I'm gonna try to do my best. And I also ask you to do your best and to be understanding with me because we know nothing about each other. So the, the only thing that we can do is try to understand um, from a point of view of, I may think I'm right, because in my country, this is right, but you have your reasons for believing that you are right too. So it's, you know, just coming to that point of, let's speak, let's understand each other. Let's um, get to, let's meet us, let's meet in the middle. Wow, thank you, Valerie, that was wonderful. You know, it makes me wonder, you know, how when you're thinking about what you've learned from COIL, not only have you learned about other people, it sounds like you're also learning about yourself too um, and how to figure out where to meet in the middle. So thank you for that. Um, let's see, uh, I think Viviana is next, right? So Viviana, you are telling us how you are applying what you've learned from the COIL collaboration? Yeah, um, I would say that it has really enhanced my skill in just being respectful when communicating with other cultures. Um, I will also be working in the health field, um, hopefully as a registered dietitian. So I really need to learn about the way people communicate um, cultures with their diet and as well as just even just counseling students I really need to be culturally aware and not be offensive not be offensive and just be really respectful um, and I also have a job on campus for my university as a summer orientation leader and we do work with international students a lot so again that'll just um, COIL has really exposed me to cultures I've never really been exposed to before so um, it kind of expanded my views on the world and it'll really help me being um yeah more competent in other cultures thank you that's great priyanka what are you going to take from your coil experience moving forward Yes, my uh, experiences towards co uh, COIL was really great and uh, I uh, could develop the higher level thinking and uh, I could really work on my communication like uh, I should actually speak slower when compared to people uh, when they speak in uh, where, where uh, they live in US they actually speak slower but in our country it is like uh, we just rush into words. Uh, I understood how oral communication is to be done overseas and uh, talking about the self-management uh, and, learn, uh, and learning skills had been uh, really given a great exposure for me uh, and uh, I could actually uh, increase my uh, retention and uh, responsibility when I'm working uh, oh, like in collaboration. It was actually great for me and uh, talking about the expertise and the knowledge that they gave us over the uh, collaboration was uh, really too up to mark. We really didn't expect uh, it would be this great. So I think it was an uh, indeed a great experience for us, Mom. And to get different points of view, it sounds like that was uh, an, 
a big part of that. Great. Um, Chiara, since it was you and Pianca, Pri Priyanka who work together. So how do you think that you will use this opportunity or what happened in your collaboration moving forward? Um, so I think it helps to adapt to different communication styles. And um, since our global future is like developing from communication, um, collaboration and innovation, um, it's all very dependent on technology. So it's just really helpful that way. So you mean that knowing how to have these kind of conversations through technology is going to be helpful right. to you. Yeah. Aha. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Thank you for that. All right. So Alejandra, what are you going to take from your experience working moving forward? Well, um, as a student of mass communication, uh, specializing in, in, in screen writing, listening, listening and storytelling is something I am passionate about. And this experience teaches you to share stories and to be grateful that there are so many ways to communicate. Um, I think uh, COIL is about to be more open-minded about cultural difference and acceptance of, of other people. And also to always check the time zones before schedule a meeting. <laughs> yeah, for sure. You're funny. That's really funny. Oh yeah, it's so true though, right? Yeah. So hey Zeus. What do you think that you have taken or moving forward from your COIL experience into what you do next? What, what are you bringing with you from this experience? Um, working in, in an international collaboration group made me a more responsible and committed person with the work. As a future education professional, because I study pedagogy, I must be committed and responsible in order to provide students with a quality education where they are benefited. And in this way, they can build their path and this succeed and try to give them international and intercultural experiences like mine in COIL because it has been very important for me. Wow, so you're gonna be a, an educator. A professor? Yes. In what subject? Sorry? Um, what discipline? What What is your content area? Science or math or English or? Uh, um, Do you know? ¿En qué espera ser maestro, Jesús? Uh, in, in investigación educativa. What was that? Research. Ah, what research? I missed the beginning. Edu educational research. Ah, okay, great. Wonderful. Okay, Courtney, you are bringing us home on this question. What is the thing about COIL that you're going to take with you moving forward, whether it's in school or in jobs, etc.? Just being considerate. It it's being considerate of, um, and we might have a different mindset and uh, often we just need to talk about it, we need to communicate better, uh, but it was a great experience and it was a great place to put that into practice. Wow, you're so succinct, okay, thank you. <laughs> and Courtney's group, I think everybody heard, they were making an app for your phone so that you could track asteroids. So how about that? Working with astrophysicists to track asteroids. So very interesting project. And you know how great it is that you're actually making something, right? That's pretty cool. And probably moving forward, you're gonna be as a, um, an engineer, you're gonna be working with people from all over the place. So 
a good experience for you. Um, Mary Lou and Jan, have you been tracking the questions in the chat? Is there anything that we should um, end with as a question or should what what's going on in the chat world? Mary Lou? Uh, there have been a lot of questions. We've been trying to capture them. I think we'd love to put them in Padlet so that if students would like to give longer answers to them, you have the opportunity to do that because I think people are really interested in what you learned, but also how you learned it and ways that it might be improved in the future. But I think in general, just in the chat, people are so grateful to hear your perspectives and to hear what you've been able to take away from your COIL collaborations, that we do this to try to make those very connections that you're saying are so important to you personally and also to your career plans for the future. So it's been really rewarding to hear you say that. We thank you so much for uh, spending time with us, for being um, so willing to share your learnings and to share your experiences. And we hope that you talk to other students about this and let them know um, that this is a good thing for them to try as well, because we, we all agree that uh, in order for us to make a better world, we have to learn how to collaborate, learn how to understand and learn how to suspend judgment. So thank you all so much. Yes, indeed. Um, this has been thrilling and so helpful for all of us because pretty much everybody who's on this call with you are trying to figure out how to make these collaborations work on your campuses. And so the more that we know um, that it actually is something that is a good thing is really helpful. So um, with that, I think maybe we can um, just open it up um, I want to just do a big round of applause for all of you and everyone who is part of this to be able to give a round of applause to all of you. Thank you so much. I know it's hard to be on the spot. And um, so we really appreciate it. Um, and we really, as Mary Lou said, we hope that you will um, be able to answer some of the questions on Padlet and we will post there. And also Roland Toussaint will be in touch with you to do an interview um, following this. So thank you so much. And thank you all for coming and joining us today. I think this is proof that what we're doing is really important and um, just thrilling to hear from the people who are going to be impacted the most by our work. So thank you all so much. All right. Yay. So um, if anybody wants to say, actually, let's get a group picture of all of you. And um, so Priyanka, if you could show us and um, we could just get a group shot with all of you, that would be really great. And um, let me just make sure I got a print screen. Great. I'll do one more. That's right. That's right. Yes. And hopefully everybody's getting a good group shot for your campus at home. Wonderful. All right. So have a great rest of your day, everybody. And good night, Priyanka. Good night, Hannah. Thank you all so much. Take care. Bye. Bye-bye.